Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner uh, lecturing on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. The first section of the first chapter is called The Integers. And like most math textbooks, or reintroductions, or remedial math level to get you back up to the speed of calculus, we need to first talk about what numbers really are. So the numbers that you're familiar with, that you learned ever since you were little, like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. These numbers, they're all called the um, positive integers. Let's see if you can see that color. As you can tell, the, the series goes on forever. It doesn't end. It's an infinite series. At some point in your education, you learned about the special number called zero. Uh, zero is special because it represents nothing. And I don't know if you've seen videos on math about uh, the, the breakthrough that zero was, but this is a very important and significant number. It's going to show up again and again as we learn math. It has some very special properties. All right, now, <clears throat> if to understand these numbers, this, uh, his example in the book is hilarious. He says these numbers could represent the score you get on a test in math. You know, if you got 100, that means you got all the answers correct. If you got one, that means you only got one of the answers correct. But if you got a zero, that means you got nothing right and you don't know anything about math. And, but <laughs> hey, we're here to learn, right? So uh, we can represent these numbers as if they're on a line. Let me use a fuchsia or pink or red. I don't know what color this is. So we draw a line. And then on this line, we choose some arbitrary point to be our zero. I'm going to choose this point to be zero. And then we stretch out a, a unit distance. Just, it doesn't matter how long it is. And we call that one. And then two of those distances we call two. And three of those distances we're going to call three. And this number line is, a, is an important concept. It's a really great way to visualize and understand what the numbers are. Let's use this uh, peach color here that's called the number line. But one thing I want you to think about is that the number line isn't really representing positions in space, aside from where the zero is. The zero tells you that on this spot, on this piece of paper, this number line begins. These numbers tell you a distance from that position. So three really says you've gone three units to the right. And you can see there's one, two, three units in between here and three. And two says you've gone two units to the right. The zero and the positive numbers together, we call these the natural numbers. Why we call them that? Because they arise naturally a lot. Don't get too concerned about the names we choose for things. It's not terribly important. We just give them names to make sure that they're, di they're different and we know what we're talking about when we talk to each other. This special point here, where the zero is, we call that the origin. We'll be talking about the origin a lot all throughout math. And uh, the natural numbers can be used to measure other things, he says in the book. For example, a thermometer. You can use the natural numbers to represent the, how hot it is outside. If you're in Celsius land, zero degrees would be freezing and 100 degrees would be the earth is boiling. But if you're in Fahrenheit land, zero degrees would be below freezing, well below the freezing, and uh, 100 degrees would be a very warm day, a hot day. So uh, uh, that means that these numbers, th it depends on what you're talking about and how they work. Well, on the thermometer, if it's a very cold day in Celsius land or in Fahrenheit land, then you notice that the thermometer drops you can go down to a negative one, you can go down to negative two. And what does that mean? The negative numbers means you're moving that many units to the left. I kind of made that one a little shorter or smaller. It should be the same size as the other ones. And this obviously goes off into negative infinity. And so these numbers, negative one, negative two, negative three, etc., we call these the negative integers. Let me write that down for you. These are the negative integers. Let me use the pink again, or the peach, the negative. Uh, so, now you know about negative numbers. That's basically everything you need to know about them. Uh, we're going to learn what you can do with them later. Um, we're, this, this conversation that we're having right now is something that we're going to have again and again in math, where we introduce a new type of number, uh, something that we can do math with. We talk about where it starts, how it moves, how you can go from one number to the other. And then we begin a discussion about the operators we can apply to the numbers. In the case of integers, there's a very important operation you can use. It's called addition. I'll write that in black here because it's important. And you learned about addition at a very young age. Um, if you had two pieces of candy and your friend had two more, then if you took his candy, you'd have even more than two. You'd have four, right? Um, and so we write down addition like this. So we take um, some integer 
we put that little cross sign, and then we put some other integer, in this case 7, and then we have these two bars here, and then we write 12. And let's analyze what this sentence says. And this, these equations are just sentences. And if you go back to the old uh, math papers, you'll see that people actually spelled out in their native language the math sentences. They didn't use symbols. This, this symbol right here actually comes from a Latin word that means and, right? So this means add. This means equals. Okay, so adding says that you're taking this thing on the left and you're taking that thing on the right and you're bringing them together like you would pieces of candy. The equal says that both sides are the same. They're balanced, right? So if there's 12 things on this side, that means there's 12 things on that side. And you can switch the equal sign anytime you want. Uh, we call this the reflexive property. Things that are equal can be flipped around like that and it doesn't change anything. So 5 plus 7 equals 12 and you learn that in elementary school. But let's learn some more interesting things about addition. The first interesting thing we're going to learn about addition is that when you take 0 and you add any number, and how do you write any number? Well, in this case, I'm going to write the letter A. Okay? And what this A means is it could be any number in there. And then we're going to write this equals what? If you take 0 and add it to any number, why? You're going to get that same number back. Okay? So this means any number. And this means the same number. This is a very important property of addition. And we'll be using this all the time. And we can even write it this way too. We can say you start with any number and you add zero. It's the same as adding zero to any number either way. And it's the same as adding or just having that number by itself. I'm going to draw a box around this. Okay? And in the book, he labels this equation N1. Okay? In math textbooks, we label our equations and we refer back to them constantly. So you have to remember which equation is which. And if you need a flashcard, or if you just need to be able to jump back in the book and remember what they're, they're talking about when they say N1, then you need to do that. You, you, so we're going to talk about N1, the equation N1. And this is the equation we're meaning. That when you add zero to any number, it doesn't change it. Okay? Now remember, the equal sign works in reverse. So if you're starting with A, then you can put a zero on the left side of that or a zero on that right side and add it together and you won't change the value of A. It won't change how many numbers you have. The next question that you're probably having is what happens when you add negative numbers? What does it mean to start at, let's say, 10 and add uh, negative 5? What does that do? What does that mean? Right? The parentheses here, don't get confused. The parentheses just means we're going to do what's ever on the inside first, and then we're going to do what's on the outside later. Okay, so this means that we're going to, this is just saying that minus sign there is, is saying that this 5 is not a positive 5, it's a negative 5. But this isn't the minus sign you're used to. But let's, let's talk about the minus sign really quick. So if we have 10 minus 5, what does that equal? Well, that means we're starting at 10 and we're taking away five things. Well, how many would you have left? You'd have five left, right? Uh, because, and the proof of this is that five plus five equals ten, right? We know that five plus five equals ten, so if we take away five from ten, then we have five left over. So this sentence is, is related to that sentence in a, in a way that we're going to explore uh, maybe in the next video. I don't know. Okay, so what happens if we did this though? If we started at ten and we subtracted fifteen, what would we get? That's an interesting question. Let's draw the number line over here. We're going to draw it uh, with a new origin. We're going to put the origin, let's say here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the 10 here means that you go 10 to the right. This number line goes on for infinity, of course. So we're at 10 to the right. What does it mean to subtract 5? Well, if you subtract 5, you go back 5 units. So you have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. You can see there's 1 space, 2 space, 3 space, 4 space, 5 spaces. So subtracting or adding the negative means you're moving to the left. Adding means you're moving to the right. Okay. So let's move to the left 15 units. So we move 10 units. We're back at the origin. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Well, that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. That's minus 5. So the answer, 10 minus 15, is negative 5. Okay. That doesn't sound very complicated, does it? 
Let's do a couple others as examples. So if we had 7 and we added negative 3, then we would get what? So we start at 7, 5, 6, 7, and go back 3, 1, 2, 3, we'd end up at 4, right? Let's do another one. These are in the book. I'm just duplicating what's in the book so I don't ruin your study. Uh, you should go back and review the books. What if we start at 3, so 1, 2, 3, and we go back 5. 1, 2, 3 gets us back to 0. 4, 5 takes us to negative 2, okay? Um, here's another interesting property. Let's go to a new page to talk about this property. If we start at 5, let's slide that down so you can see, and then we subtract 5, that's the same as starting at 5 and adding a negative 5. And what does that give us? It gives us 0. What if we started at negative 3 and we went 3 to the right? Where does that get us? 0. This tells us that when we start with any number and we add its negative counterpart, it's the same as starting at the negative counterpart and adding that same number. It's the same as 0. This is equation N2. And this is a very important property that we use all the time when we do math. So just, just like uh, in N1, we discovered that we can add 0 to any number. In N2, we discovered that we can get to 0 from any number, positive or negative, by adding the inverse, the, the additive inverse, what we can call it. On the number line, what does this look like? Pull out my little pink. We have the number line here. It goes off to the right, goes off to the left. Let's put zero in the middle this time. If we start at a and we go back negative a steps, we get back to zero. And if we start at negative a and we go forward a steps, we get back to zero. This is sort of a mirror with the origin being the plane of the mirror. So the reflection, when A looks in the mirror, it sees negative A. And when negative A looks in the mirror, it sees A. So the positive and the negative realms are sort of mirror images of each other. One goes to the right while one goes to the left. All right. Note, and this is important, we say minus A. And we say negative A. 5. Okay. What is the difference? Well, the difference is what if a was if a was let's say negative 3, then minus a would be 3. Minus a is not negative, it's positive. So if you don't know that a is positive, you you can't say that this number is negative. You have to say it's minus a. And it's an important distinction. Uh, you'll often hear people, when they're doing their math lectures, they'll say negative A, when it's not really negative, it could be positive. And one more thing, we call it the additive inverse, that's right. So we'll say 3 is the additive inverse of negative 3. And negative 3 is the additive inverse of 3. That's a number, a word that you'll hear again and again. Inverses, additive, multiplicative inverses, and we'll get into the rules for addition in the next section. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lane's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.